So you're working on your co-ed stunting and you notice that when you're tossing and catching your girl, you starfish. Or maybe you have no idea what starfishing is. But I bet you if I showed you an example of it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Or you may have somebody on your team that starfishes when they co-ed stunt. And today we're gonna show you how to recognize it and we're gonna show you how to fix it because it affects your stunts, it's not good, and it's not gonna make you any better. So let's fix our starfishing. So let's talk about it. What exactly is star fishing? Now star fishing is when you go to toss your girl in the air and your feet jump out really, really, really wide. Now we typically see this in partner stunning when the guy or our base is not strong enough with their toss or they're not confident enough that their toss is getting to the top. And so what happens is they're trying to drop below so that they can catch and then stand back up with the stunt. Now, if you hit your stunt, like that's great, but Here's the problem is that if you get comfortable with star fishing in your toss, what's gonna happen is it's gonna really dramatically affect your ability to progress beyond that because if your feet are so wide when you catch that you can't recover, that's really gonna affect your ability to work on higher level skills. And so today we're gonna show you exactly what you can do to fix your star fishing to make sure that you don't negatively impact your co-ed stunting. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to determine how wide is too wide. Now, for most people, that's gonna be outside, and we say, I say that how wide for your feet is too wide. Now, typically for most people, we're gonna, we're gonna go with a baseline of shoulder width is about as wide as you want to go. If we go beyond shoulder width, that's where we're gonna start to get our feet too wide when we're catching our girl, and that's gonna make us off balance. So we want to determine how wide do we want to go. We wanna mark the floor with the widest point. In addition, we want to also mark the floor with where do we want to start. So we give ourselves that window of how much movement we allow our feet to move when we're catching our stunt. So with some white athletic tape, you can line on the floor your starting point and also line how wide you're going to allow yourself to jump. Now our first exercise is going to be getting comfortable with that range. So what we do is we start standing on our inside lines and from there we simply hop out to the outside lines, making sure that we don't go any farther beyond these two lines. Now our ultimate goal is that we get comfortable enough that we can hop to these two points without looking down. Now at the beginning, feel free to look down, make sure that you're landing inside that range, but we need to be able to get to that width without looking down. So eventually we want to make sure that we're getting there without looking down. Now after we've mastered this width, we want to start to add weight, which is going to mimic our stunting. So we would grab either a medicine ball, a kettlebell, or some dumbbells, and we're going to hold the weight and then repeat that process. Again, hopping from the inside point to the outside point, getting comfortable with the width that we're going to allow ourselves to go. Now from there, we want to get into actual stunning mechanics. So we want to go through our toss. So from here, we would start with our feet on our inside point, toss our weight as high as we can, hopping again with our feet outward, making sure that we don't go beyond our outside lines. Once we've done a few reps of that, then the last piece is going to be mimicking holding weight overhead. So we would take two dumbbells or two kettlebells or our medicine ball, and we would hold those at shoulder width. We would dip, drive up with the legs and the arms, hop out again, staying inside of our outside lines, locking the weight out overhead, and then making sure we bring our feet back into the middle once we're done. For these exercises, you can perform anywhere from 10 to 20 reps on each. This is something that needs to be done almost every day, or at least every day that you're in the gym because we want to reinforce these body mechanics. Once we master this, we're able to perform all of these exercises without jumping outside of our tape lines. Then we can effectively eliminate star fishing and help you to get the highest level stunts you could possibly get. Thanks so much for joining me for this video. I hope this helps your partner stunning. We have an entire partner stunt library. It's amazing, it's like 70 videos demonstrating every single partner stunt you could ever wanna hit. If you want that, click the link right here. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click this link here. And if you haven't been to hitzeronutrition.com, you're being silly, go to hitzeronutrition. There'll be a link in the description below. It'll take you to the only supplement company, wellness company in the world for cheer athletes, all curated specifically for you. We'll catch you on the next video.